Welcome to today's Optics Trade Debate. Uh, Andras and myself, Theodor, we will talk a little bit about two major groups of products in our store. Uh, the first group are analog night vision devices and the second group are digital night vision devices. So, in this respect, we see a classical digital versus analog battle. Uh, we know that these products has been on, have been on the market for many decades. The digital is coming to the market really strong in the last couple of years. So, Andras, I think you uh, checked most of the questions from our customers regarding this topic and also you made some discussions with all other staff. Uh, what are the general questions in yes, this sir. regard? Theodore, as you said, this is a uh, very general topic in the field of uh, night vision. So mm -hmm. there, um, we receive uh, quite a lot of questions on this topic. Uh, and the, the most common ones uh, will be discussed today. The first one is, um, I would like to know the differences, or I would say advantages, that analog night vision devices have and the advantages that digital night vision devices have. Well, if we start with uh, the best way will be to say, okay, what is a great advantage of analog and yes. at the same time misadvantage or disadvantage of, uh, of digital. Yes, yeah, so enumerating yeah. them at the same time. The first thing is definitely the uh, resolution. At the moment, majority of digital night vision optics still have sensors which are quite small, at least compared to the digital cameras, to all digital optics meant for daytime use. So the, the digital night vision at the moment still have a little bit smaller pixel count on their sensors. And because of this reason, the analog still offer a little bit more resolution. So resolution one for the analog, zero for the for the digital we would speak in this football term well, the football <laughs> yes. championship is a couple of days away uh, then the second thing is the power consumption the power consumption also in the analog uh, devices at the moment is much smaller than in digital night vision optics this is the reason why this uh, digital night vision optics devices have a lot of batteries and they well they the, the energy gets spent really fast and so on uh, it's an issue with digital devices that you, that you always have to carry some spare batteries or to think about power sources because usually it consumes power really fast Posar in this regard made a big step forward where they're with their b-pack batteries and so on because they they managed to do devices which enable really really fast uh, replacement of battery. This is just a cap. The cover, yeah. the cover it's not uh, the battery, but still you can replace the battery in one second. With analog, you have one battery or two batteries for years. So the, the power consumption is really, really low. So these are the two main advantages of analog devices. Then we have the, I would say the average lifetime of these devices where digital is better. Because the digital uh, we live longer and first of all with some analog and I would say more than half of all analog devices you have a normal lifespan of an image intensifier tube so every time when you turn on you start to consume these hours in lifespan and one day when you turn it off it just doesn't intensify light enough because the lifespan has gone, you use the device for, I don't know, three years, five years, six years, it doesn't matter, and it doesn't work very well anymore. Mm -hmm. And it even loses power in this time. More, the closer you get to the end of the lifespan of the image intensifier tube, the less the light gets amplified. So this is something what you avoid with, with digital. Digital always works the same. So I would say that uh, the normal lifespan of a, of a digital device is going to be much better than on the analog. So you don't have to worry about the battery, but you have to worry about the in yeah. intensifier tube getting damaged with time. Older. Older, <laughs> yes. And getting spent, because it's, it's getting spent with more hours you use it, more, the more spent it is. Uh, then the second thing is uh, that if you uh, forget and expose the analog night vision device to bright source of light. Let's say if you turn it on during the day and you look outside in the bright 
sunshine with the cap removed that with the cap removed you will ruin the image intensifier tube so you damage the device and the device has to go on service and the tube has to be exchanged and this is uh, well it, it costs a lot inconvenient procedure it's probably. really inconvenient so now we have two two in terms of yeah with digital points you can with most digital devices you can even use them during the daytime and it will not be a problem. Let's say like with this ATM, it has a day mode, it has a night mode. It doesn't even notice that if it's a day or if it's a night. So there is no risk of damaging the device if you're using it during the day. And then the one major difference is the illumination. We know that all these night vision optics, they need illuminators. Like you see here, you have the illuminator, the infrared illuminator, Integrated. this one has the all of them have integrated, uh, integrated um, infrared illuminators. And now, with first generation of, of these devices, the light in this infrared illuminator has to be below, I would say, 850 uh, nanometers of uh, wavelength. And this is the, in this um, range of wavelengths, the animals can see it. No. So when you have it like here, I think this one has 780 uh, nanometers of wavelength, uh, this Yukon. And when you turn on the illuminator to get a good image, and if you look at wild boars, they will notice you and they will run away. Especially if you uh, enhance the yeah, uh, illuminator yeah. strength. Right? And with all night vision optics, at least with all this, I would say, affordable consumer level night vision optics, you need an illuminator. If you had Gen 3 military top grade device, you don't need an illuminator anymore. There is enough of ambient light, even if it's complete darkness, and you're able to use it without the illuminator, almost. Uh, while with this first generation and this digital affordable optics, um, you need an illuminator. We know that, let's say, Photonis does sensors for digital night vision optics for their professional use, for military police and so on. Uh, which doesn't need any illumination, but not in this. We are talking about the level of 30,000 euros and up. But with these devices, which are really far more affordable, you need the illuminator. And where is the difference? The digital night vision optics has sensors which are you can use really, really high um, wavelengths of illumination to still get a good image. So that means that you can you can have everything from 850 above or even 915 or 940. That's the invisible spectrum for the animals. For the animals, completely invisible spectrum. And let's say like this uh, F155, it has a 940 uh, nanometers of uh, wavelength in this uh, illuminator. And you can just turn it on and put to maximum, maximum strength, yeah. and no animal is able to, to notice it. So. And then you have a clear image because you, you have a really strong uh, infrared illuminator full of light, but it's invisible light. So for the hunters, this is really a, a, I, a huge plus. Yeah, I think for the hunters, it's, it's a big step forward because no animal is able to detect the illumination in digital night vision devices. So you're able just to put the illumination to the maximum power and observe. With analog, this is not, not the case because if you have... Uh, uh, illu infrared illuminator or wavelength uh, 850 and lower, you will get noticed. Some animal will notice you and you know then the hunt is over. Uh, so this is the advantage of the digital night vision. I also think that this, because of this advantage of digital, digital night vision optics is developing so fast. And then we come to multimedia. We know we live in the time of, of YouTube channel. We are now on the YouTube channel. And of course. <laughs> so, all of these devices, digital night vision devices, are able to capture image and to capture video. And some of them are even uh, able to capture sound. And I think this is, a, this is a huge difference because even if you just scroll through the YouTube and look at all the videos which are recorded by hunters, you see that this is a big thing. Everybody wants to re record what he saw on his hunt, what he saw somewhere. So recording function 
on all these digital night vision devices is a very important So on factor. analog you won't find these features, no. of course. Yeah. The only way to record the image is to put your cell phone behind it and yes. try to make a video, but it's but not, not... It's not going to be of high quality. No, no, it's not yes. going to be good. With this, we even have videos where I personally filmed a bear, a fox and a wild boar at the same time at a feeding place. With this, I bad for the apples. <laughs> yeah, bad for the, for the apples. Yes. So, you, if you are lucky, you are able to record some really astonishing things that happen during the night. And I think this is also a big plus of, of digital night vision devices, even though they consume a little bit more of energy. And then the third, um, or maybe now it's fifth or sixth. Yes, we just lost track. I <laughs> uh, lost track a little bit. Um, usually, the digital night vision devices. If they are meant uh, to be used on rifles, on rifle scopes, like this is a forward attachment, you put it on your rifle scope. Uh, at least to our experience, they are less sensitive to recoil than analog clip-ons. If, if you look at the most affordable analog clip-ons, some of them have problems with recoil. If you look at really expensive, like uh, Daedal or Yanke or similar, Night Spotter, then they work, it's no problem, but they cost really a lot. But if you look at the affordable clip-ons, Sometimes they have problems with recoil, while these digital clip-ons, they don't. Um, so I think these are the main differences. What is common is that most of these devices are already uh, waterproof, at least many of them. Uh, the size and the weight is it's very, very similar. And not, it's not such a big difference. Even though with batteries, if you put the biggest battery here on this uh, F-155, it will heavy it will be heavy but still the analog devices also uh, can be heavy so we, we already touched this topic this next next question that i have a little bit but still uh, in which situations do we recommend each type mm -hmm. oh this is a difficult question <clears throat> if resolution is the highest priority then still analog if money is no object then still analog because if you invest six seven thousand euros in a really good let's say a dedal or yanke the image quality is superb the digital is still not there but if you are looking for something more affordable and you wish to use it for without any care or i would say any worrying about damaging it the, the bright sunlight and so on then go with the digital and I also think that digital is the future because you can take videos, you can take photos and so on and this is important in today's world. So if, if resolution is not of the, of the highest important then definitely digital. If however the resolution is the, the pinnacle of what you need then go with an, with an analog. So in, in terms of football matches we could say that it's a draw for now. Yeah, but for we'll now, see what in, happens in the future. Right? Oh, I, I, can, I can tell you, the, um, the Gen 2 will probably give, give way to digital completely. The Gen 2 Plus and Gen 3 will probably also give some way to the best and more expensive digital night vision optics and to thermal. Because the pricing of thermal optics is going down. down. So uh, I wouldn't like to be um, at this moment if you're a producer of the analog night vision optics. Uh, the times are not the best and most promising one, I would say. Yes. Yeah. I hope that uh, that we have uh, elaborated on the topic enough so that we've uh, made it clear the differences between analog and night vision devices. Um, I would like to thank you guys for watching. So you can uh, like the video if you found it useful, if you enjoyed it, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, that would make us really happy. And if you have any additional comments, leave down in the comment section below or send us an email and we'll hit you back with a reply. And thank you guys for watching and see you next time. Bye.